the Issei class would turn out to represent the midpoint of modern Japanese battleship construction, with the Kawachi and Fuso classes preceding them, and the Nagato and Yamato classes succeeding them. The preceding Fuso class had been designed with no less than six twin turrets, as the Japanese Navy anticipated the only remaining possible rivals to its ambitions being the much larger Royal Navy and United States Navy, and they had an alliance with the former of the two. Thus, they concluded that their ships would most likely have to fight a numerically superior American force, and so the, there was a need for many turrets to allow them to engage multiple targets, as opposed to a more efficient triple turret layout like that of the American standards that nevertheless would require them to engage single targets. As part of the 8-8 plan, Japan needed more battleships and battlecruisers, since in terms of modern units, if you included the Congos, they currently had four of each. The original plan had been to build four Fusos to match the four Congos, but the latter had taken priority at a time of limited budgets, and by the time Fuso and then Yamashiro were well under construction, and more money was available, foreign designs had advanced, and a few issues with the Fusos themselves had become apparent. As a result, numerous changes were made. The hull was lengthened, more boilers were added, additional armour was incorporated, the secondary battery was reduced in calibre slightly to help with rate of fire, and the two amidships gun turrets were relocated to reduce blast effects and simplify the protection of the ship's vitals, although this did lead to a reduction in crew quarters, whilst at the same time, ironically, increasing crew numbers. Thus, the two remaining ships became a new class, the Issei and Hyuga, being laid down in 1915, launched in 1916 and 1917 respectively, and commissioned in 1917 and 1918 again respectively. The ships were designed for 23 knots on two propellers, but they would actually prove capable of around 24 knots on trials when using mixed firing. The main battery would consist again of 12 14-inch guns in six twin turrets in three super-firing pairs, one forward, one amidships, and one aft. A secondary battery of 20 single 5.5-inch guns was included, with 18 of them in casements and two in shielded mounts, for a total of 10 guns per side. Four single 3-inch anti-aircraft guns provided a small degree of protection from aircraft, and six underwater torpedo tubes, with three per side, completed the armament. The armour protection was just under 12 inches thick over the citadel, with a two-layer deck system with a total thickness of 3.4 inches, but an overall effective thickness of just under 3 inches, and a number of other measures were put in place to guard the magazines against the possible impact of torpedoes or mines. Once in service, the ships had relatively active careers. Huga was the unlucky one, as she managed to accidentally explode a main gun, and run down a schooner within a couple of years of commission. Both ships would then help in the relief efforts after the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923, and would form a core part of the Imperial Japanese battle line after the Washington Naval Treaty. But by the mid-1930s, they would be taken in for refits, followed by a heavy modernisation. This would involve effectively a complete rebuild. The aircraft flying off platform was replaced by a dedicated crane and catapult. The forward superstructure was converted to the pagoda style to support numerous new features. And in the process, it became about as complicated as Latin grammar. Torpedo bulges were added to increase underwater protection and raise the ships higher in the water in order to compensate for the additional weight of a lengthened stern, new deck and turret roof armour, and various other changes, and new boilers with almost double the power output were fitted, which pushed speed on trials to around 25 knots despite the increased displacement. The main guns received increased elevation to 43 degrees, except for the aftmost turret, and new technology was fitted to increase the rate of fire on all the main guns. The three-inch anti-aircraft guns were removed, and four twin dual-purpose five-inch mounts were installed instead, along with ten mounts of the not-yet-infamous 25mm anti-aircraft gun, which replaced a small interim battery of 20mm pom-poms that had been installed in the 1920s. In exchange, the deck-mounted secondary guns were removed, 
along with the ship's torpedo tubes. Once war with China broke out, the ships were used to blockade the Chinese coast and ferry troops, with a further small refit in 1940 which was made in preparation for conflict with America. As they were awaiting the decisive gun battle that never came, the Issei's had a relatively quiet start to the war, well, with the exception of Huger blowing up another one of its guns, and both ships receiving a basic radar suite. However, after a number of supporting roles, the ships were selected for conversion for into hybrid carriers in an effort to replace some of the deck space that had been lost in various battles during 1942, with the conversion starting in 1943. Shortage of time and money prevented full conversion into carriers, and so instead the two rear turrets were removed along with the entire secondary battery, with four more twin 5-inch mounts installed instead, along with the twin 25mm battery being taken out and replaced by a total of 19 triple 25mm mounts to give a portion of the crew something to do in the event of an air attack. Still more 25mm guns and a few rocket launchers would be added later on once the ships were back in service. 70 metres of flight deck with associated hangar space were installed in place of the rear turrets and fitted with catapults to allow the launch of a planned 22 aircraft air wing, 11 dive bombers and 11 recon aircraft. Cranes were also fitted to recover aircraft that would land on floats, although in the event neither ship would actually be equipped with anything like this full air group. For all this effort, the ships would not actually end up being used as carriers, instead largely seeing service as incredibly heavily armed troop and cargo ships until the Battle of Engano, which was part of the overall Battle of Leyte Gulf, where they were included in the Northern Decoy Force. Unlike most of the Japanese carriers that day, both ships survived largely intact, although this was not for lack of effort on the part of the US Navy's aircraft and submarines, but the two were eventually wound up back in port with relatively minimal damage. The action over, they went back to their job of the most heavily armed cargo vessels in the war, moving strategic materials as well as troops and munitions back and forth, and managing to avoid further air and submarine attacks until March 1945, when they were placed in reserve as Japanese territorial losses and oil shortages meant that even this role was no longer required of them. Instead, they were covered in even more anti-aircraft guns for use as floating batteries, but their luck ran out in July when massed US Navy air attacks found them at anchor, and over two days of consistent assault, both of them would be sunk by dozens of bomb hits, with the wrecks being left in place to be scrapped after the end of the war. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.